In this video, I'm going to take you through the proof of the compound angle formulas for sine and cosine. So let's start off with what does this mean, sine of x plus y? Well, actually, what doesn't it mean? Um, normal algebra rules don't apply here. We can't just distribute the sine into the x and the y and get sine x plus sine y. That's not what this means. Those two things are not equal to each other. Sine of x plus y doesn't mean sine times x plus y. Sine by itself doesn't have a value. This isn't a number times a number. Sine is just a word that means, in a right triangle, the ratio of its opposite side to its hypotenuse um, for the given angle. So sine of x plus y does not mean sine times x plus y. It means the sine of a compound angle an angle made up of the sum of two angles. So what does it equal? So I'm going to take you through a geometric proof um, that will get us to the identity for sine of x plus y. And by identity, I mean we're going to get an expression that is going to be true for all values of angle x and angle y for an expression sine x plus y and for cos of x plus y. So I'm going to take you through a geometric proof using this diagram here. So I have a rectangle. And inside of this rectangle, I've inscribed a right triangle with the hypotenuse of length 1. So what I'm going to do first is I'm just going to go through and label all the possible angles I can find here. So <clears throat> in this right triangle in the bottom right, I see a 90 degree angle. And then that means that these two angles, this one and this one, must also add to 90. Those must also be complementary angles. So this angle up here must be 90 minus x. Right, the sum of these two angles has to be 90. Um, let's look here. These three angles, this one, this one, this one, form a straight line, so they're supplementary. So these three angles have to add to 180. So this one's 90. This one is 90 minus x. So this one has to be x. Right? If this one's 90, these two have to add to 90. So this one must be x if this one is the difference between 90 and x. Let's keep going. Uh, let's look at the right triangle inside inscribed in the rectangle. Uh, we have our 90 degree angle. This angle is y. This angle y must be complementary with this one, so this one must be 90 minus y. And let's do our last triangle here. So what we have is um, we've got this, uh, this angle here is complementary with these angles. These angles are complementary, right? They have to add to 90 because it forms a right angle in the rectangle. So this angle here has to be the difference of 90 and the sum of x and y. And now this angle over here must be complementary with this angle because of the 90 degree angle here. So these two have to add to 90. So if this is the difference between 90 and x plus y, this one has to be x plus y. And that should be enough angles to um, label all the sides of our triangles and rectangle here. So let's now go ahead and try and label the sides. So let's first look at the right triangle inscribed in the rectangle. So let's look at, I'm just going to outline it quickly, we're looking at this right triangle. In this right triangle, notice it has a hypotenuse of 1. So we can get some expressions for, um, if this is our reference angle, we can get some expressions for the adjacent and opposite sides of it. So let's see how we can do that. So let's look first at the adjacent side. So if I want an expression for the adjacent, I know the hypotenuse. I know that cos of y must be the adjacent side over 1. So adjacent over 1 is just adjacent. So cos y is equal to the adjacent side. So the adjacent side I could just write as cos y. And a similar uh, similar reasoning for the opposite side, right? If we want the opposite side and we know the hypotenuse, well, sine of y must equal opposite over the hypotenuse, which is 1. So sine of y equals the opposite. So I can rewrite the opposite side as sine y. Okay, now let's look at the right triangle in the bottom right. So let's look at this right triangle now. Let's look at that right triangle, get some expressions for the other two sides. Let's get expressions if, once again, if, let's now make x our reference angle. Let's get expressions for the adjacent 
and opposite sides of this right triangle. So cos of x must equal the adjacent over the hypotenuse, and this time the hypotenuse is cos y. So if I want to isolate adjacent, multiply the cos y over, and I get that the adjacent side is equal to cos x cos y. So I can rewrite this as cos x cos y. Let's, do, let's figure out the opposite side. So we'll use sine. So sine of x equals the opposite over cos y. So I know if I multiply the cos y over, I figure out that the opposite equals sine x cos y. So I can rewrite this expression for this side length as sine x cos y. Sine x cos y. Okay, now let's look at the little triangle in the top right. So <clears throat> let's look at this right triangle up here. So if this is my reference angle now, let's get an expression for the adjacent and the opposite of this one. So I'm not going to write it down this time, but cos x would equal adjacent over sine y. Oh, I'll write it down. So cos x equals adjacent over sine y. So the adjacent must be equal to, if I multiply the sine y over, cos x sine y. So I can replace adjacent with cos x sine y. Cos x sine y. And the opposite side, I'll use sine. So sine of x equals opposite over the hypotenuse, which is sine y. So if I multiply the sine y over, I figure out that the opposite side up here is actually equal to sine x sine y. Okay, I've almost done labeling everything I've got here in my diagram. Let's go ahead and do our last triangle, this big one up here. So let's label the side lengths of this one. So let's use this is our reference angle. So our reference angle is now x plus y. So this is adjacent, this is opposite. So if I want cos of x plus y, that must, meet, that must equal the adjacent over 1. So this adjacent side is equal to, if I multiply the 1 over, it's just equal to cos of x plus y. So I can rewrite this side here as cos of x plus y. And this whole side, the opposite side, I'll use sine of x plus y, that equals opposite over hypotenuse, so opposite over 1. Opposite over 1 is just opposite, so this opposite side is equal to sine of x plus y. So let's erase all this. This whole side here is sine x plus y. Okay, so now we can use just some properties of rectangles here to get expressions for our compound angle formulas. Notice if this whole side length is equal to sine x plus y, that means since it's a rectangle, the opposite side over here must be equal to the exact same length. So sine x plus y must be equal to the sum of those two sides. So let's write our identity here. So if we have, I'll write it in green. So if we have sine of x plus y, that's equal to sine x cos y plus cos x sine y. So sine x cos y plus cos x sine y. Cos x sine y. Now let's use the other two sides of the rectangle to create the identity for cos x plus y. So cos x plus y equals, and now let's take a look. So let's look at, here's cos x plus y. Cos x plus y is this length here. Notice that, that length there is the difference between, it's the difference between this whole side and that little piece there. It's the difference between those two. So cos x plus y equals cos x cos y minus this little piece here, sine x sine y. So let's write our identity for cos x plus y. So cos x, plus, cos x plus y equals that big side cos x cos y minus that little piece in the top right, that sine x sine y piece. Minus sine x 
sine y. And then now we have identities for uh, compound angles sine x plus y and cos x plus y. We could use properties um, of even odd functions, right? We know that cos is an even function, sine is an odd function. We could use properties to prove um, the sine x minus y and cos x minus y compound angle formulas. Um, but I'll leave this with you for now. That's the tricky part is getting those two. And what you could end up coming up with if we um, if we went ahead and used our symmetrical properties with sine and cos, we could come up with these formulas as well. So those are our compound angle formulas, and you could also create them for tan using the identity, right? We know that tan of x plus y would, you know, tan is always equal to sine over cos, so it would just be the identity of sine x plus y over cos x plus y. And you could go ahead and simplify that and get your compound angle, angle formula for tan as well. All right, hope that helped.